I wanted to get Mark on the, the bullshit machine for quite a while now because he's, um, he's one of the things that I love is whether it's a mate or just someone that I, uh, that I, that I look up to. I'm not saying I, I don't look up to you because I do. But um, one of the things I love is, is when, I, when I know a guy who relentlessly goes for his dreams and, and you just see how it's almost like the win. It, it's almost like organic with you because you just always go for what you want. And I, and I just fucking love, I've, I've loved seeing your journey, man. And, uh, and, and that's why I want to get you on because you, you really are someone that I genuinely look up to with, with all the stuff that you do. It just seems to work. And, and it, I guess in one way, it's fucking annoying. But in another way, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's really good to see. And, and so if you guys don't know Mark, he, uh, back in the day, he was Rick from home and away. G'day uh, there. And, uh, and since then, he's, he's just been on The Voice and he absolutely nailed it on The Voice. Um, he's done acting, singing, but he's just basically a guy that's just followed his, his dreams relentlessly. And I absolutely love and adore you for that. So but welcome, Mark. First. Thanks, brother. Mate, I, 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 I really appreciate that. I, I wish... Um, it, I'm glad that it that it appears as though I'm really nailing it as much as it appears like that because from the from my from my perspective, yeah. it just seems like an endless slog, you know. But yeah. I'm, I'm certainly enjoying the journey, so I appreciate I appreciate the love, man. But that's cool, isn't it? Because even though from the outside looking in, it looks like you're winning, but internally it always feels clunky, doesn't it? Oh yeah, dude. yeah, absolutely. Like because the thing is, people see, especially in the entertainment world, people see the the big flashy things you know the the tv shows or the movies or whatever it is or, or they hear the the finished product but they don't see the work and that work could be years between, yeah. and they don't hear anything from you but they don't there's so much else going on that they don't really think about it and it's like oh yeah yeah that guy yeah but little do they know it's been two and a half three years since i've worked well i've been doing a lot of work but you know what i mean like since anything's come out and I've just been slaving away trying to hone my craft and, and figure out how to how to mix a song, you know, yeah. <laughs> or something yeah. or something of that nature. And it's yeah, it's a, there's a lot behind the scenes that people don't really don't yeah. Really observe. And out of all the uh, out of all the stuff you've done, whether it's been acting or or, uh, or singing or doing your band stuff or even your own creative projects, what's been what's been the the the, the thing that you've done where you've got the most learning from? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I would say, um, I mean, look, back when I when I reflect upon my time on Home and Away, I was uh, 18, mm. you know, straight out of high school. I was a kid from the country, moved to Sydney the day after I finished my year 12 exams and was thrown into this TV show shooting, you know, five days a week, equivalent of an episode a day with three cameras set up with you know heaps of crew members they they all know what they're doing and it was just like go and i was all instinct i hadn't i did drama at high school yeah but that was it i had no formal training so that became my formal training that mm. was and and the stuff that i that i learned um was huge yeah. and and i guess yeah reflecting upon it that was a massive learning curve yeah and the things that i've learned from that one you know how to how how to technically how to be in front of a camera and work with other actors but more importantly how to be a, a, an adult around other humans yeah that was probably the biggest the biggest thing and i certainly made a few mistakes as anyone does when they're given too much money at too much of a young age yeah so, but yeah you, that was that was probably it yeah because you basically became like a full-out heartthrob as soon as you were thrown into that whole home and away mix I guess so. Yeah, I mean, the thing about that show is that it's, it's a, um, it's a very, it's it's a steam train, man. Like it's it's, it's got momentum that has been happening for thirty years mm. now. Yeah. And people love the show, and and it doesn't really matter who you put on the show. There are fans of the show that are just diehard and they and they live for it. Yeah. So you kind of don't have a choice if you get, if you if you are involved in that show you're just there's a certain level of anonymity that you're never going to have again mm. um and it's it's exciting it's wonderful but it's also confronting yeah and some people are, that's all they're interested in they want to 
be a famous person. And I guess there's a part of all of us that kind of want a little bit of that because you feel validated. Mm. But then there's other people who, who just, they like acting. That's yeah. their thing than performing. Yeah. And then the, the, the fame and the, and the recognition that comes from it is, is quite frustrating and they don't really know how to deal with that. Mm. Um, so I think I kind of sat somewhere in the middle. In the middle. Um, yeah, just like, you know, I was, I was, as I said, I was a kid from the country and, and then the idea of being on TV and getting a bit famous, that's very yeah. inviting. Yeah. But then again, uh, the reason that I did it and was good at it was because I love acting and performing first mm. and foremost. Mm. So um, figuring all that stuff out, um, yeah, that was quite that was quite a trip. Yeah. I, I listened to a, uh, a podcast by, you know, Russell Brand. He's a... Legend. Oh, I love him. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, and, he's uh, amazing. He, I listened to one of his podcasts. He's got a podcast called Under the Skin. And he was yep. saying that, uh, it's similar thing to what, what you were saying, how, you know, so many people want fame and they're just doing anything to, to get there and, and whatnot. And then once you actually get there, you, you sort of, you, you just sit back and go, this is actually a bit weird and, and you know, fake and, and this and that. Yeah. Like, I mean, what was your... What was your experience? Because you you've actually got to experience. Yeah, well, I, a tiny, uh, you know, a tiny. Uh, no, dude, you, uh, you uh, amount you, of it. But. You got there. You were like, would you say you you got to like a grade celebrity? I was as, as famous as Russell Brand was. Yeah, equally as famous. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah. I mean, look, it did get to the point where I couldn't go into a public place without getting recognised, mm. um, and that's that's weird. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, it's a it's a real trip for the ego, yeah. Um, because you start to expect it, and when it doesn't happen, you feel a bit let down. Um, and yeah, it's it's an odd it's an odd thing to experience because people know who you are, and they have their own idea of you that is formed that is probably very far from who you actually are. Mm. So then you can fall into this pattern of trying to be who they think you are mm. it, like like i, I you know it, i i should probably talk in first person i could i felt myself trying to go oh there's a reputation that i should probably live up to mm. whether i agree with it or not and i think that can really spiral for people yeah yeah um, they you know especially when you're if one's in a leading man position that's that's you gotta you gotta constantly be this you know ultra masculine leading man guy and yeah and that's i mean that's hard work we all try and we all try and carry that as much as we can but yeah. sometimes sometimes we've got to shed a tear you know mm. yeah yeah so, so when um what even on that like at what at what point in your career have you when have you hit a point not even in your career but in your life where you just went Oh man, like you, or you shed a tear, or or, or yeah. you, you even just sort of sat back and went, "Fuck, man!" Like I actually don't know what what am I doing here? Like, yeah, that was that was a big one for me when I went when I was because I lived in LA for about ten years. Did we ever uh, hang out was, in LA? Yeah, yeah, heaps. We, yeah, we heaps. did. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So for me, so for me, it was the interesting thing was going from from the notoriety I'd gained from like home and away and then doing, I did underbelly and was at the Logies and those kinds of things. So kind of, you know, I was in the magazines and people, people who were into that world knew who I was. Did you win a Logie? I did and I got nominated twice, but I didn't win. (laughs) Damn it. I would have been fulfilled forever Uh, if only I'd won a Logie. That'd be cool. Um, No, I don't mean to shit on it. It was a great experience. No, of course. Um, But yeah, so I went from, from home and away where people kind of, love the show and and they had who the character they it wasn't really me i was playing a character mm. but then now i've just come off the voice being myself and trying to be as authentic as i can possibly be mm. um and also after you know going through being alive more and having more life experience it's been very interesting getting recognized now mm. and having people come and talk to me or message me on instagram and um, it's just so much more fulfilling to me now because it's it, it's something that I've done and they're actually connecting with with me. Whereas it was very rare that people would, on Home and Away or my acting would say, "Hey, I really love that scene you did." It was more so like, oh, what's this person like?" Or, yeah. "You're, I love the show." 
mm. which is great, but it's not. It doesn't really doesn't it doesn't really hit the spot with me personally. I guess it's kind of anybody. So, so that gap in between, I was in LA and I was auditioning, and I must have done a thousand auditions in my time. And uh, I was and I was working on songs and making music and um, just it's hard work over yeah. there, dude. You know, you yeah. were there for a good chunk of time, and mm. it's it's pretty soulless. Um, yeah, and it gets it gets tiring, and got to the point where I was just my wife and I were just kind of that underlying tension that just sits there within society just kind of became a bit too much for us, and we were like. Mm. Like, like, what am I doing here? Mm. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the, for the idea of something that could happen. There's lots of opportunity here. Don't get me wrong, but, but that's when that kind of thing kicked in for me. I was like, I don't. I, I think I've lost my way. Like, mm. I, I, it's not worth it. Mm. So, like, because so, what's the ideal? I get that like, my ideal world is that I get a huge acting role, mm. um, and get paid tons of money. But then I'd move straight out of LA if that was the case. Mm. Like the, that's the first thing I would do. So, so that moment was a very interesting. And trying to get a band started over in LA was really hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, LA, LA is all about, and it doesn't have to be LA. It can be wherever. But what what I found about LA is that you're constantly you've got this carrot and it's dangling. <laughs> And yes. constantly just going, um, 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 um. Yeah. and you can never yes. bite it. It's like, fuck, yeah, yeah, I just want to. Yeah. Well, sometimes maybe... you get a little lick and you're like, oh, oh. But you never get to eat the carrot. You never get to eat the carrot. Well, some people yeah. do. Some people yeah. get to eat the carrot, but then. And they... then they eat all the carrots and no one else gets any carrots. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's um, truckloads of carrots for some, and everybody else gets no carrots. No carrots. Well, we see the carrot, but we don't get to touch. We see. Yeah, we don't get to bite yeah. into it. We get to hang out with people who are eating the carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get to see how pretty the carrots are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, no, but it is. It's it's like such a it's such a um, interesting concept, isn't it? Because even when uh, it, it doesn't mean. I mean, obviously, you experienced it in LA. I experienced the whole carrot uh, chasing thing. But, um, but, but, you know, for you, when you actually realize that the carrot is within, mm. then it's, it's quite a, it, it's, it's quite cool because you realize that what you're chasing is, uh, is, doesn't sit with someone else, you know, it doesn't, mm. it, it, and, and, and it, what it sounds like to me is in that moment, you took the power back and, uh, and when, you know what? Fuck it, man. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna do what feels right for me. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And then what like, was that? Like, what did you do? So. Well, I I I realized two things. So the two things that are my you know the things that I love the most are making music, and um, and 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 acting. And and so with those two things that I'd gone to LA to do, I just had a look at what. The, the capacity that I was doing them in. And I found that I was writing songs that I didn't really connect with. Mm. And I was going for auditions for roles that I didn't want. And I was just like, well, hang on, why am I doing this? Mm. What, like, why, why am I actually doing this? And, and when you sit back and look at your life when, and, and you can observe the patterns that you've been falling into, it really stings. It's a very hard thing to do because you fight with yourself. And if someone else were to bring that up to me, you'd get very mad. Mm. You know, that's a real fuck you moment. Don't tell me how to live my life. And then when you do it to yourself, it's a real battle. You yeah. know, you can, because you, because you're like, well, I, I kind of lost my sense of identity. Like I was thinking, I based who I was and where I lived. And, you know, it was kind of like, oh, return on investment. You know, I've been here for 10 years. It's going to happen soon. Mm. And I was just like, yeah, but if it does happen, is that going to hit the spot? Is that what I, is that what I want in mm. life? And I guess, and the answer was not yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, it was, it was a bit of soul searching. It was actually also some, um, several psychedelic experiences that kind of brought me into that place really? as well. What, yeah. you know, like mushies or? Yeah. Mushies. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, and, um, yeah, I joined this weird meditation group as well and just kind of 
was searching for a while over yeah. there. And yeah, the, the mushies really kind of brought me in touch with my own humanness. Really? You know, what it is to be alive and to just be a, be, um, a part of this world. It's mm. something that I'd never really pondered before. Yeah. And it seems so obvious, but when you actually sit and think about the um, experience of getting to be alive. Yeah. And when you really get that, it's 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 quite it's quite profound. Um, and so did that, you yeah. did you get that while you were, you know, un, un, like, or while you were taking the mushies in? Was it in a psychedelic episode or was it after? It was, it was in it was during the trip. Can you at tell the us end what the happened? Trip. What happened? So I was standing on. It was the first time I'd done mushrooms actually. And I was, uh, some friends and I went to a place in Los Angeles called Griffith Park. Yeah. And we were, and it's a beautiful park mm. and we were over, we, we found this weird bit that was off one of the trails and we, we walked down, um, down this weird kind of bit and found this, this great little spot, which is kind of like a little bit of a cliff edge looking over all of LA and we just see the whole city. And, um, you know, we'd been in and out of the, the waves of the trip. I don't know if, if anyone's ever done shrooms before in that kind of, when you're trying to go inward and learn about yourself, it really comes in waves. Mm. Um, and, and it had kind of calmed down and I was standing there looking over the city and I was just thinking like, wow, look at all this crap we've built. Um, and, and looking at the planes flying around and was just observing, observing human life and the stuff that we've done. And then the sun set, the sun started to set and it was just, it was just the most incredible experience. Mm -hmm. Look, watching and actually observing a sunset while on a, on, on, on mushrooms. Oh, it just changed my life, dude. So simple, but yeah. I just got so connected to this, this thing. I was like, wow, that's a massive ball of energy <laughs> and it's giving us life and i yeah. started to think about what life is and what my own life is and and it was all very overwhelming at the time mm. but then it's 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 continually pondering that after the experience when you're back in your normal existence in your normal everyday life um and and i always try to um bring with me the lessons that I learned in a psychedelic state into my non-psychedelic state yeah, um, and, and try and carry them with me. So it was, I guess it was, that was the catalyst within, within the experience. And then afterwards remembering them and, and, and putting them into my normal life mm. were the things that really made me kind of make some changes and, and, and yeah, and yeah, have some epiphanies. Yeah. 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 Have you ever done any psychedelics? Nah, man. I, to be honest, I'm uh, I'm always up for going with the flow, but with psychedelics, it scares the fuck out of me because if it should, I, yeah. I, yeah, I know. Because with me, what I'm fearful of is that if I go at w wherever that takes you, and I don't have control over what's going on anymore. I, mm. I feel like I'm going to be one of those guys that goes off in the ether and never comes back. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 I mean, look, that's, that's a, a, a very um, common fear. Common fear, And I completely yeah. get it. Like, I think the thing is to, it's, um, it should be terrifying. Yeah. But, it, it, because it's serious. It's the most serious thing that I've ever done in my life. Yeah. People take him at parties and at festivals and stuff and good luck to you, man. Like yeah. that's, that's a great way to, to scramble your brain, in my opinion. Yeah. I think it's 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 hard enough in the comfort of your own home, mm. let alone out in a park, Yeah, let alone at a party around strangers. It's an exceptionally vulnerable state of mind and yeah. state of being. So if you need to have a breakdown, you need to be comfortable to have a breakdown. Yeah. Because like stuff from your childhood comes up and and you know ways that you, with these weird memories that you didn't realize you've been holding on to and, mm. and the way you look at your future and all this crap comes up so you've got to be able to be around people that love you and care for you and in a place where you can freak out if you need to freak out because it'll pass it always passes mm. um well there is it, there's yeah. that uh there's that saying i don't even know who it's by but by some sage maybe it's uh muji or someone but uh Love he says, yeah, this too shall pass. Mm. This too yeah. shall pass. 
Yes. Yeah. And that's and that's been a big one for me too because I've had some exceptionally difficult psychedelic experiences yeah. that really stayed with me and kind of messed me up for a good few months. So it's not like it's all it's all perfect, but mm. you just got to for me I just had to learn that I just got to be able to ride the wave yeah. and just observe the discomfort mm. uh, and and know that the more you fight it or try and get away from it, the more of a hold of a hold of you it has. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I did have uh, I did have an experience when I was like fifteen. I OD'd on uh, car sickness tablets. Oh, what Dramamine? <laughs> no, nah, they're called Ables. Okay. And um, it pretty much fucked me up for four years. So that's oh, what, dude. Yeah, but as that's in like horrible because because what Ables do? They're a psychedelic. Like if you have enough of them they act, you, you they're a psychedelic like you hallucinate yeah, wow. you do all. so um oh. there was a bunch of mates i was like 15 and we had uh i think i had eight or ten and it, it literally i thought i was going to die for three years oh, so, that's, <laughs> so, so it stayed with you for a while that kind of state of mind big time because and then it got to the point where i had so much anxiety that like i remember mum was like making uh making dinner because i was still young living at home mum would make dinner and i'd look at dinner i'd be like i'm pretty sure mum's poisoning me oh wow (laughs) it was bad so i'm like you know what that was quite traumatic and i'm like i reckon even at this age i i i love getting stoned once every three four months and have a joy and have a laugh but i reckon anything more than that I'm just scared it will take me back to that place. I'm like, you know what? I'm all good, mate. Well, I mean, and the fact that that, that you are aware of that probably means, one, it very well could, and two, there's no need for you to do it. Like, it's the thing for me about psychedelics, I think that they they call you. Mm. Like, and, you know, I'm talking so highly of them. I haven't done them in probably six, seven years. Yeah, yeah. Um, But it's it's like they, they call you. When it's time to do them, you do them. Like, I just had this overwhelming desire to desire learn to about do. them yeah. and to mm. do them. And I did so much homework and then it just so happened. There was someone who lived in my building who, you know, who had some and was very experienced with them and, and taught me, you know, all this great positive stuff about it. But yeah, I haven't done them for years. years yeah. So it's yeah. like, the, it's not the fact that you are aware that it's, that, that you don't need to do them is, is just as important as people who desperately do need to do them. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. It's not like, I think the problem too is that people, because they're drugs and they're considered drugs and they're illegal, mm. they get in the same category as like you know coke or Molly or anything yeah. like that. Like it's not like that. It's not. It's, yeah, it's not something. Experience. Very different experience. Yeah. It's it's it, it, if you yeah you can really break your mind if mm. you're in the wrong environment. Yeah, and that's yeah. that sounds funny when you see it on a movie, but if you've ever had any moments of psychosis or anxiety or anything it's it's the worst thing ever Mm. the worst possible thing you could imagine yeah and there's so many people dealing with all that shit at the moment with everything going on i mean yeah so you'd have to be you'd have to be ready to to jump into that sort of boat and uh, yeah yeah and so um so i mean what what did that lead to man like uh you know because it's it's funny, man. We're not just following your journey with with music and and uh, and acting, but especially with music, it's almost been it's been something that you've you've really wanted to to bring out into the world, and you've stayed so determined with it. And yeah. uh, and I was telling you just before we push record that um, you know I listened to your your last album, which which you did even before you went on the Voice, and yeah. and I was like. Do I tell Fursy that I really like it, or is he gonna think that I'm just, you know, shoving fucking wind up his ass just to, you know, piss in your pocket or whatever? But I genuinely that album I listened from the the first song to the last song, and I was I listened to the album probably four or five times because I love every song in it. It's like, oh, dude, it's like, uh, you know, um, who's the fucking legend? Oh, Kravitz, um, mixed with fucking. You know, old soul shit. It's such a good album, and, and your oh, voice dude, sounds so. You. Did you did you like uh, did you do that with a band, or did you record all the all the music yourself? Um, yeah. So that's 
Firstly, bro, thanks so much. That really, oh. that really hits the spot. I wait, really, so, wait, it means so much so, to me. Just so people know, what's what the, what's the? It's called it's called Stone Love. It's it's Stone just, Love, it's just it. like a solo. It's under Mark Furs. The album's called Stone Love. Yeah. And now moving forward, I'm going to call the band. I've got a, a group of guys up here in Sydney, and the band's going to be called Stone Love. Love yeah. it. Yeah, so we're working on some new stuff now. So good. Um, yeah, so that such was, a good album. Cheers, man. Yeah, mm. so that was, and funnily enough, um, I'll explain about it in a second, but mm. you, I don't know if you realise just how much of an influence you guys were on on me and have been. Yeah. Like I, I used to look up at the at the Duke Cartel shows. I used to look up you guys on the on the Viper Room stage just adoringly, like, man, you guys yeah. really shaped a lot of my um, my musical styling. So, cheers, you know, brother. full circle, bro. Yeah, yeah isn't yeah. it? Um, yeah, so that was all, that was basically <laughs> all me. Like uh, there were songs that I'd written over a couple of years. Um, I recorded all the, all the guitar parts and all the bass and, and um, did some like scratch vocals. The drums were all like programmed. It's me sitting behind my computer and, and perfectly, you know, playing air drums and going, okay, that would go like that. And then, there, okay, cool. So then I'd program that in on my computer. And, and then I took them to a very good friend of mine, um, Jim Oss, who is a uh, incredibly talented producer, engineer, songwriter. Yeah. And he just polished them up and mm. made them sound beautiful. Added a few keyboard parts, recorded the vocals with him. And so he made them sound, that's why it sounds as slick as it does. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but the recordings was basically, yeah, me kind of fumbling around and trying to, trying to play. Mm everything and figure everything out so yeah. i'm glad it all i'm glad it all came together <laughs> did it ever such a good album man and it just suits Thanks, suits your voice down to a t it's uh it's it's kick Thanks, ass mate. yeah well it's funny like that we were talking about my old band shotgun alley before and that yeah. i was in that band about 2011 2012 and so i joined that band um after they'd started, they the things didn't work out with their previous singer. Mm. I joined them because I knew those guys and we were friends. But he, the previous guy, um, RJ, great singer, but he's got a super high voice, kind of mm. more of like an MJ kind of voice. Yeah, right. He, and so his voice obviously sits much higher than, than mine. And I was always into the, you know, the 80s kind of cock rock stuff, like mm. the Motley Crue. But, I mean, that stuff is so high. So I did all this homework and... and on, on discovering my voice and I mm. did the, the Brett Manning singing success and the mastering mix program and, you know, doing a, the, all the weird old stuff for, for months and kind of unlocking that upper register. And I managed to get there. I was singing some stupidly high stuff. Yeah. But I found that it wasn't, it just wasn't fun for me. Like mm. it got to the point where the gigs were so stressful. I'd have to warm up for at least 40 minutes before every gig. I couldn't talk to anyone because when you're in a pub, in a bar environment, mm. talking over people is the best thing to kill your voice. So I couldn't hang out. I couldn't drink or have a couple of drinks afterwards. Had to mm. go straight to bed. And, do and even then, and fuck couldn't do any rack, couldn't party. There was no, <laughs> there was no none of the none of the drugs and you know i was, I was yeah. with my my girl at the moment so it was a bit of the sex and the rock and roll yeah, but yeah. The, you know none of the partying that's uh. um so it just yeah it just became a really stressful situation for me mm. and i and even then you know when i was on my best behavior i still was like jesus this is not going to come out tonight mm. so um this new stuff i kind of made a decision to just go look who am I trying to impress? Mm. Like, like, there's always going to be some bloke who can sing higher than me. Does that? It just becomes a dick measuring contest. You yeah. Know? It's like what? What? What's the point? Like, I can. It, it, does it fulfill me? Do, do I? Does it mean the song's better? Does it move more people if I can sing really high, or does it not make any difference? Yeah. Because I think I think one of the things that I discovered musically, and and I'm, I'm glad it's resonated with you, is that if I can actually write songs that I connect with and sing the way that I sing. Um, not beyond my limits, then it, it just is more authentic. Yeah. And, and uh, that authenticity is what people are going to resonate mm. with. And, and it appears to, to have, have, have worked. It's certainly the music that I'm the most proud of that I've ever released. Yeah. Do you reckon there's a way... Whoa. Oh, sorry. Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? No. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it sounded like a, like a, like a cat. <laughs> no, nah, sorry. Um... What I was going to say, shit, how annoying is that? Um, <laughs> that just fully put me off my thing. No, because I've got in my podcast, right, I've got this thing. It goes, I, I made up this this link thing and it goes, the bullshit machine. 
Cool. And that for some reason came up. Oh, did it? Yeah. I didn't hear that. No. <laughs> so is this the part where you where you where an ad start? You know, in the middle of a podcast when you're listening, and then some friggin' ad plays, and you're like, ah, oh, you skip forward. Oh shit! But no, yeah. I, what I was going to say there, there it is. Uh, what I was going to ask is around um, authenticity. You know, is that do you reckon that's something you can actually learn, or do you just, or, or is it something where you just have to fuck up in life? enough in order for you to get to that point where you're like I've just had enough of, of trying to be someone for for others or, or whatever and I'm just going to be myself and express myself to the world yeah I reckon I reckon that's by, that is the way you learn yeah that's the real way that you learn like like well, that's certainly the way I learned you know um, you just have to from my experience just you know pain is growth just mm. just do things and, and if you can if you can Im- once I embrace that um, that that's kind of my a, a mantra for me in, in certainly in hard times pain is growth and mm-hmm. just remind myself of that if I'm going through a hard time just go okay well what am I going to do in this situation am I going to piss and moan about it or am I going to sit in it and watch it and feel it and either lash out or cry or whatever I need to do but be like honor it because that's the only way to get out the other side. We always mm. think that we can like get around it and or push it down and ignore it, but it doesn't go away. It just turns into you being a shit person or, or, or ruins your personality or, you know, you go you go one one of two ways. But if you can just, from what I've learned, if I can just be with it, go, oh, I made a mistake and that really hurts. That didn't turn out the way I want it to. Mm. Pity party. Okay, cool. Now, what did I learn yeah. from it? What, yeah. and, and and for me, I guess the thing that's been the most valuable lesson is if I can just be honest and be vulnerable and authentic, then I just feel better about my life. Even though I may not be, if there's a scenario where I could do something that will make me seem cooler than I, than I actually am, you can fool people for a little while mm. um, and you can fool people for a long time. But I just don't feel good about my life when yeah. I do that as good as when I just go, yeah, you know what? Like it, this is, this is where I'm shit. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the funny thing is more often than not, it's, it's a really endearing way to be, you know, yeah. people almost always gravitate towards that and, and connect with that. Big time. Um, yeah. I mean, a, 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 an example for something that just happened recently, my wife and I um, actually just had a miscarriage. Yeah. So that, that was um that was heavy and we and we decided to talk about it yeah you know no one really talks about it and we just we posted about it and thought because we thought well what are we going to do like Mm. just pretend like everything's all good and just go back to social media life as usual and um just deal with it silently and yeah or do we just put it out there and be open and kind of follow that same thing i was just talking about so we did we posted it and it was overwhelming the amount of people that reached out Crazy. And we're saying, hey, I've been through the same thing. And it mm. seems very much like we tapped into something that is a pl- something that people want to talk about mm. but don't feel like they can. Yeah. Um, so it was really um, was really healing for us and I think for some other people as well to mm. be able to just go, yeah, that happened to me. You know, some people it's happened to a bunch of times. But yeah. then they can still, they still have babies, you know, and it's, it's, there's so much around that that I didn't understand. And we never would have learned it if we hadn't talked about it. We hadn't mm. just been honest and authentic because some people don't want to hear about it, but it's yeah. like, well, don't listen. That's fine. Mm. There's a ton of people who really want to hear about it. So yeah, I think, yeah, for me, I, I have a hard time not, um, I think it's a good habit to be into just being, being pretty straight up about being, Yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah. That must be a, yeah, I mean, look, I have no idea what that must be like, but it, w- it would almost be, you know, like you, there's this excitement and, and, and you know, this nervous excitement and then it just gets sort of taken away from you. So it must be heart-wrenching. Yeah, yeah, it's... it's well, that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's it certainly, um, certainly much more difficult for, for my wife, for, yeah. the, for the female. You know, she's... The female goes through so many physical changes, you know, mm. and just uh, as an outsider, just observing what happened 
to her and how she changed emotionally, hormonally, physically, all this mm. stuff that's been going on with her. Yeah. It's, it's fucking hard work growing a baby, man. Like just looking at that, it's a full on full job. On thing. Man, she, I haven't, I haven't met her, uh, Laurel. Yeah. 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 I haven't met her, but you know, I've seen some stuff that you guys have done together and you know, just on your Instagram posts and stuff, man, she looks like a strong woman. Yeah. She's, she's, she's the greatest dude. She's, yeah. um, and she's she works on she really kind of tries to do some do some deep work on herself. Yeah, you know, we've all got our own bullshit, mm. and that's what I what I really love about her is yeah. that she's she she goes in to that stuff. What you know? what do you reckon with with you guys? What do you reckon is the the absolute uh, the the foundation of, of your relationship? Well, I mean, it's nearly ten years now, mm. so at this point, I would certainly say that it's. Um, it's an ability to be a fair, to, to have as effective communication as you can, mm. and to be able to to look at a scenario or a feeling or something that needs to be addressed and addressing it until it's actually resolved. Mm. You know, because there's times when we even do it ourselves and we're having a, a discussion, shall we say, <laughs> and um, and it's and it's not. And we get to the end, but it's not at the end, you mm. know, and, and you could easily go, okay, cool. We'll go separate ways. But it's like, no, 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 come on. We got to, we got to keep digging. We yeah. haven't got there yet. That's and the actually, hardest part, isn't it? When you yeah. got to keep digging. Yeah. Yeah. And you go, oh, okay, we could leave it here, but we're not done. Are we? You still feel shit. I feel shit. Like let's, let's, let's actually get there. And I, and you know, we pride ourselves on really having it out like that, you know, and, and getting to the, to the to the being vulnerable that, that same authenticity that vulnerability and, and, and just trying to do that i mean look half the time it takes ages for us to get there yeah because you hold it in you hold it in, hold it in. then when you do at least when we do have the conversations we tend to um really effectively communicate, communicate and understand yeah. each other really really going do does this does my partner or whoever it is understand me mm. or am i just saying things because i'm feeling this emotion you know, they're two very different things. Yeah. Sometimes it feels real good to say stuff when you're pissed off or, you know. Doesn't it? But it doesn't achieve anything. No. Other than digging you deeper. Mm. Um, so it's it's being able to have the... Courage. The try and, yeah, the courage and also <laughs> just the, it, the the moment of going, yeah, well, a lot of times it's courage. It's courage. Mm. But it, for, for, I think for us guys too, it can, it can also be like, have a just just cool it down a bit and just just chill and just go don't you know i'm feeling all these emotions but i don't have to act on them mm. because i want the end result to be i want to resolve this mm. whereas you know that can be it's easier said than done but yeah. but in the moment if you just blow up or you know say yeah. stuff because of feelings and then you never know yeah so i feel cool. i definitely find myself in that uh situation with uh with with my beautiful partner Kimmy where um, you know if we're, we're in an argument or something and this you know when you feel this thing come up where you go I could say that and it's going to be really hurtful but I, I'm more like passive aggressive I'll say shit yes. that's, that's like <laughs> me too <laughs> you know? yeah and, I'd say little sneaky jabs yeah, at other yeah. times yeah just like, and, and yeah. it's like I feel it there and my, my soul and my brain goes that shouldn't come out and I go yeah Nah, it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so who's going to win? Sometimes yeah, the, the good angel goes, don't say that. And you go, yeah, you're right. That's a shit thing to do. Yeah. And, and then that feeling of, of like it just eventually dissipates. And other times the, the devil guy, devil Tom comes oh, out. Oh, it's yeah, fun, yeah, man. I know. That, I yeah. totally know the feeling. Yeah, but you're right. It does take a lot more work when you, you know, it's hard, man, when you, you've just got to step into your heart when, it, when it's the fucking, the hardest moment to step into your heart. Yeah. And and one thing that I, I've I've done recently, which has been really cool for me, is it's a, it's almost like a little maybe it's a trick or whatever. But when when we're in a discussion, uh, I look at her and I go, "Oh, what are you doing in there? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm wow. in here. I'm in here. What are you, what are yeah. you doing? You know, it's like I'm just seeing yeah. myself in her, and that yeah. that sort of brings back the. I guess the onus and the responsibility and the accountability on me on that's on, great. On that's what some I want to rum create. dust shit, man. Yeah, yeah, I love that. it is. It's like, rum duster. 
Yeah, yeah, like like how how like you're just the same as me, but you're in that one. <laughs> yeah. You're totally right. It'll just that'll just bring it all down when you go. You're the same thing. Yeah. So, but I think I think the thing it, it does come down to honesty because I think that some some people find themselves in situations where they can't they don't think they can they can just be one hundred percent honest mm. because if you if you don't want to be one hundred percent honest, you'll do and say things that that will get you out of the situation without having to be honest, which would also get you out of, maybe get you out of the situation, but at least it would be transparent. So people fight and then, you know, they like, you know, that old trick of someone treating your partner like shit until they break up with you because you, you know, that kind of thing rather than just saying, look, it's not, it's not what I want it to be or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But that's yeah, exactly right. That's hard. That's really hard stuff, man. Yeah. So, dude, let's get on to um, let's get on to the voice because it'd be like before yeah. we actually talk about your experience on it, it'd be cool to because I reckon you would have had this moment where you would have gone like, well, I, I might be wrong. I'm just assuming where you would have been like, fuck, do I do that? Is it, oh. do I do I or do I not do that? Like, do I even go down that route? Is that going to ruin me? Is that going to be good for yeah. me? Like what, you know, how did you even make the decision to... Uh, about 40 times I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Honestly, man, I talked to all my, like, my, my close friend group yeah. and was getting all this conflicting, you know, opinions. And eventually it was all just like, bro, it's up to you. I was like, I don't want it to be up to me. I want <laughs> yeah. you to tell me what I should do with my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, so many times, dude. Like, I, mm. it's it's you know, because I'm I'm aware that being a guy who people may remember from TV, going on a singing show as a contestant is perhaps not a good look, especially if no chairs turned around and I tanked it. I was like, eee, that's that's going to be bad. Mm. So I was terrified of that. I was having nightmares of that happening. Yeah. Um, but then I was just, I got to the point where I just thought, look. So I went in and had a meeting with them and talked about it. And, you know, did the, it was the audition, essentially, the first mm. audition, like with the producers and talked to them. And, and I was kind of really honest with them and just said, look, I'm I'm worried. Because some of those shows, they make fun of people, mm. like like Idol and that kind of thing. They, they have this thing called a tragic no, where they do the whole story, the backstory, and they set it all up and they make people know this person and then they do their performance and they don't get through. And it's great TV mm. if you're into that kind of stuff, but it's it's it sucks for that individual. Um, so I was like, I, you know, I brought that stuff up, mm. and um, and they w- they said all the right things at the time. They said like all the things about they said, you know, here on the Voice Australia, we don't really do that. We don't even call you a contestant. We call you an artist. The judges aren't judges, they're coaches. And our intention is to champion everyone. We want every single person to win. And I was like, well, that's great if that's true. But, mm. you know, I've been in the industry a while and I know that producers say stuff in order to get people to do things. Yeah. So that was kind of a leap of faith for me because I went, I hope you're not bullshitting me because, you know, it's working mm. what you're saying. Um, and it turns out they were telling the truth. They yeah. really were. My experience set after I pulled the trigger and went and did it. Um, no, it was nothing but, but positive. Yeah. It was what they said it would be. So, yeah. but yeah, man, back and forth a hundred times. Yeah. I, I, I got to the point where I was like, I did the application and then I hit him up and said, actually, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and they, like I said, I did the online application and then, and then they'd organized me to come. I was like, nah, nah I'm, I'm sorry. Good. It's just not, it's not for me. Yeah. It's not for me. And then they were like, no, 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 come in and meet us. And you know, like, um, so yeah, man, uh, all all of that. So so and then you know you did all that. You went through all the whatever the pre application stuff, and then yeah. you know to the point where you got to you you know it's your first audition before you know with the chairs turned not turned mm. like back with the back to you or whatever. Yeah. And you rock up, and there's like you can actually feel when you're in touch with uh, you know energy and and whatnot. You can feel that that split moment when you go up to the mic and it's like, yeah. huh. and especially, <laughs> it's to, especially for me, especially for me, because I know you, I was yeah. like, uh. oh, dude. 
It was bad. It was. I've never been more nervous in my entire life. Because at that was, moment, it was like everything was riding. It's like, wow, what? Like, have I made the yeah. right choice? Is it? Yeah. yeah. So it was. I was. I got to the point where I got there for the blind auditions. They would. They would do like two sessions in a day. So that would essentially be two episodes. Um, so I got there and I was meant to be in the first session towards the end. Mm. So I think I got there at about. Uh, Laurel and I got there about 11 and then um, oh no, I was going to be at the start of the second one right? Mm. I got there about 11am and then they said oh we've changed it, the order so you're actually going to go on last um, so I was there from 11am and I went on stage at 9pm so I'd spent the whole day backstage seeing people go in and out you know with a whole range of emotions one after the other and I'm like I'm starting to, I was, I was in this like big tent, this holding tent. I was like, oh, the air conditioning. Like, it's drying my voice. I can't sing. I can't sing, babe. Oh, we're going to have to go. I can't do it. And, you know, all these excuses coming uh, out. I did about 50 nervous wheeze. Yeah. And, and, um, and, I, and I got to a point where I was actually starting to freak out a bit. Um, and, and my wife, Laurel, said to me something that really helped me. She was like, there was a, there was a woman on last year. Her name was Natasha, and unfortunately she passed. Mm. Um, she was battling with, I think it was cancer or leukemia. Um, and she did the show last year and then, um, she passed just before shooting the new season. Mm. And, and Laurel was like, look, you, you're stressing out about this and not wanting to do it, but, but you get to have this experience. Mm. And, and it was, she kind of reminded me of that stuff that the, that the mushrooms had reminded me mm. of, like, you get to be alive. This is, yeah. this is like, you'll never feel more alive than when you are doing this thing right here. Like this is, this is a, this is a cool thing. You yeah. know? And, and, and our friend Natasha got to go and do this and now she doesn't get to do any stuff like this anymore. She's Powerful. in the next, the next place. And I was like, wow. And I'm, and I'm, I was like, that's huge. I'm sitting here complaining about, Oh, I don't want to do it cause I'm scared. Mm. Um, but, and then that completely reframed me. I was like, Oh, I get to do this. And I'd let the nerves get the better of me, but I was like, nah, this is great. Look at this, like, like just observe this feeling. I'm terrified and it's amazing. And I completely was able to turn it around yeah. because of, thanks to that, that, those words of wisdom. And, and I was still exceptionally nervous, but it enabled me to just embrace it and mm. be like, you know what, whatever happens, happens. And, and it was that getting that state of mind that enabled me to kind of just relax and and kind of get in the flow state like mm. like when i when i was up there singing like i don't know what i was doing man i was just i was offline i was just like it was just happening yeah and i was doing this i was doing stuff and i was like do a, she did a shucker on the stage and like put my foot up on and i was it was no, like smashed and, it bro you smashed and, it <laughs> no, you did. Thanks, you absolutely smashed it yeah it was, um it's i'll tell you what as a as a rock musician you know this it's 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 very weird that yeah because you know, normally there's people having a drink it's rowdy people are talking mm. and, you know they're, they're excited and all that kind of stuff but this was like the complete opposite of that you're singing to the back of chairs you walk out dead silence there's all these lights and and it's and it's quite confronting and there's all these people in there mm. but they're all like a few little whispers and and they're all waiting for you and there's this amazing band of band, yeah. session guys behind yeah. you like the best in australia <clears throat> and i'm surprised and, i wasn't in that band <laughs> yeah well they, they asked you right but you you i was, was like too nah. busy. yeah too busy, busy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 sorry um, keep going yeah yeah <laughs> and um yeah and then it and then it's like you're just kind of going all right here we go and they and they keep you standing there for a little bit too long they know yeah. what they're doing to really try and get those get those nervous shots out. Yeah. yeah um and then yeah but the good thing was when it started, you know, it's it's it was loud and it was rocking and it sounded huge. So I was like, sweet, now now I'm good to go. As soon no, as it starts, yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Like you know how to do it, but it's just you just got to get get moving. Yeah, man. And so, all right. So you had that. Uh, I mean, yeah, you, you smashed the voice. Had that. What'd you come like fifth, sixth, or something? I, I was in the top eight. Top eight. Um, yeah. And yeah. the guy Chris, who actually won. It was between me and him in Team Kelly, and they chose him. So technically, I came second. <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> That's what I tell myself anyway. Oh man! So after that experience, like 
obviously, you know, you, you made some incredible friends, new friends, and, and oh, you yeah. know, some great connections. But ultimately, you just got to express who you really are to the world, you know, which is what mm. I, I noticed in your, you know, watching you through that. And then so what what is, like, what do you, what do you what's now? Like, what are you going to do? You, you, you've done The Voice, and, and it, it's almost like this is like another episode where you, you sit back and go, fuck, I have to be my authentic self again. Like, what am yeah. I, what am I going to express to the world? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Dude. Mm. It was, uh, it, it was a funny thing because during it, I, it, it's hard not to get kind of a bit caught up in the whole competition aspect of it. Mm. But then I, I kind of realized during it that that's not what music is or even the music industry is really. That's what TV is. Yeah. And that makes great TV having a competition and having a winner. Mm. Um, because it gives you a peak to build to for for the, the a TV show, but once I was able to let go of that and just go, look, I, I'm I'm here, I'm on the ride. There's so much um, backstage and behind the scenes and hanging out with these beautiful artistic people, um, and 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 getting to to perform on that stage and and hang out with the crew and all that kind of stuff. It really it it really made the experience so much more enjoyable. And I, and I was really proud of myself that I was able to be present mm. for the experience, like for other things that I've done in my life, like I've done some cool stuff, but I, it's kind of happened. And then, and then I've gotten really kind of down that it's been finished. And that's because I, I wasn't really present for it. Mm. Whereas for this one, I, I made the intention of just stopping and looking around and, and going, okay, what am I doing today? I'm trying on seven different outfits that the wardrobe team has curated for me and I'm going to love every minute of it, you know. I'm definitely not wearing those pants, but I love this experience, you know, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing and being yeah. very present. And, and it really made it a lot more fulfilling. So then to answer your question, now that it's all finished, um, I, I guess I'm really stoked with the fact that I was able to be um, authentic and it, and it seemed to come across like me, you mm. know, watching it back. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of how I behaved and, and, and what I, what I did and mm. all that stuff on the show. I'm really proud of it. And, and, um, I've had a bunch of people reach out to me and, and, and a bunch of, a bunch of fans hitting me up, asking me about music and made some fans that, that actually want to hear what I'm personally doing and working on. Mm. Um, so Which is at what? the moment I'm, what are you well, doing, I'm, tell I'm us, doing tell tunes. Us, I'm, us, I'm, yeah, well, I've been I've been doing this this studio that we're I mean right now. My dad yeah. came up and helped me um, hang a solid core door. Which if you've ever done that, that's a shit time. Crazy. I'm, so is I'm that all soundproof now? Well, it's it's a lot more dead in yeah. here, so I can record vocals and um. <clears> where's my, here it is. I've got I've got to spend a bunch of money on a good Ooh. mic shield and all that kind of stuff. I like so it. Making a bunch of noise in here yeah. and um, working on my mixing and playing a lot of guitars and yeah. so working on a bunch of new songs. Probably another another album. It'll probably be about seven songs, um, and that should should be done in a few weeks. Mm. Fingers crossed. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to pump that out. I mean, I would love to be able to say to you, I've got a big tour going on, but because of COVID, there's of just course. no gigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a, which is a bit of a bummer because it would have been a great thing to just go straight, hit the road with the band, and just just play everywhere. But it is what it is. So, yeah. Um, and are you, are you collaborating, or are you, are you are you only working on your own uh, the own thing? Right, what's so the so yeah go. The, yeah, the songs at the moment are ones that I've been cooking up on my own for a while, mm. but now I've I've got a, a, a group of guys. Um, to play in the band who are, who are kind of jumping in on, on these ones and yeah. you know, putting some guitar solos in, adding finishing touches. And then once we've been able to rehearse a bunch and kind of get a feel for us working together, the next group of songs will be more of a, a collaborative writing effort. Yeah. Um, at the moment, there's still more kind of just the inner workings of my mm. depraved musical mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, cooking away, cooking away at that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Currently, yeah, man. So good. And then, is, yeah. is acting going to be something that you you will do again, or are you just going to sort of see how that rolls out, or what? Yeah, the acting world is an interesting thing, man. Like I've never really, um, I've never chosen to not do it or give it up. Like, but but the thing about it is, it's you're kind of at the mercy of what is available and what people want you for. Like yeah. I always do the auditions that my agent sends me and, and I'm, I'm, I'm keen to do things, but it's, it's just like, 
it's a, it's a dry time for me. You know, <laughs> it's just a, it is what it is. I've I've done some I've done a, quite a bit of writing as well. I've written a couple of um couple of movies, really, which I'd love to get made. Yeah, yeah. I've Shit. written I wrote one that's a um like an adventure zombie comedy, yeah, action movie um, about this guy who he's he lives in this post apocalyptic zombie ridden world it's been a year since zombies took over the world and he's been living in this police station and he's terrified and the only way he can manage to have enough courage to get out there and and get supplies is by doing heaps of the cocaine that's been in the police station in the evidence room the only thing that gives him enough courage yeah um and then he obviously goes throughout his his life and and in in this zombie world and has to confront the world yeah and his own demons and that kind of stuff that's um, cool. And there's another one that I've written about this guy who's a con man, an alcoholic con man who rips off um, religious people by pretending to be a priest. And so he goes <laughs> to their house and does like fake blessings and stuff, takes cash. And this this man approaches him to do um, an exorcism on his daughter because his daughter's possessed. And he's, he gives him this big wad of cash. He's like, yeah, sure, I can do that. So then he goes to this house in the middle of nowhere and has to actually do an exorcism. And he's a drunk. He doesn't doesn't know. He's just bullshitting. So. Making it up. Yeah, that one. <clears throat> that one. That one. I'd love. I think is you know I've written it to be relatively low budget. Yeah. Um. So, but as far as you know, writing a movie script and <laughs> getting it done, dude. I like. I don't know what I'm doing and how well, to, how to make that happen. So. Yeah. I yeah. mean, look, dude. It's uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? Where you where you, like, this is what I find right is that when you when when you have like a a vision or you've got like a, a, a quite a clear end result you know which is you, what you mentioned before it's almost like you're never going to know how you're going to get to it yeah but the moment that you you have no idea of how it's going to pan out is is actually the the beginnings of of it actually manifesting into your life yeah 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 you're right you're right if it, it, as long as i think as long as that focus is on it becoming a reality and you got to choose it yeah that's it the things do fall into place mm. because you it's what you're it's what you're putting your energy into mm. yeah um and i will admit it's not that i've kind of put that stuff on the back burner for a little while um since doing the voice and doing a bunch more music stuff so i'm I'm cooking away at the music a lot more in the forefront of my life. So um, good, man. So yeah. good. And then it oh, sounds I've, like I've you... got another one that I'm writing to actually, which is about this dude who accidentally does an exceptionally high dose of mushrooms at a wedding, <laughs> and then he and then he goes he goes out into the forest, the rainforest, and and has this life changing trip, which is like you know it's all That's kind you. of a version of me, yeah. really. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I've got these. Uh, I'm really good at the creative stuff, but yeah. as far as the like I can move laterally really well, but moving forward and getting seeing things through, man, that's that's definitely one of my one of my weaknesses. It's a it's a hard it's yeah a hard to yeah yeah. Well, and it sounds like you're gonna have a baby like this year, next year, or whatever. You, yeah, maybe. I mean, through. yeah. It's look. It's been a bit of an ordeal. I mean, a big ordeal. It's it's been hard. It's been really tough. Mm. Um, trying to building you know, a family and stuff. Yeah, deal, dealing with and then dealing with a. Uh, with the miscarriages is, is obviously physically very very challenging but emotionally yeah. it's it's hard work and and i think you know we were kind of we were planning it and, and and laurel was tracking all that stuff and and trying to get everything right and um and it just becomes quite stressful so i think we both we both have decided you know let's just Step. let's just relax on that and mm. just take it easy and and just not not try you mm. know so when it if and when it happens is when it happens yeah. and i think it'll be I think this thing has been a real, um, as difficult as it is to see, been a real blessing because, you know, maybe we were, maybe we were a bit tightly wound about it. Mm. Um, whereas now we can just be like, you know what? Yeah. Um, it's when it happens, it's cool. It's Here cool. we go. Are yeah, you, are can. you perfectionist? You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. And to the point where I, I like, um, I don't do things because if I can't do it perfectly, I, I'm also, here's the thing. I'm a perfectionist, but I'm also exceptionally lazy. Yeah. So it sounds like I, me. I leave, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I either don't do it at all and and put it off, and then just like half ass it at the last minute and yeah. get it done, or I'd spend my entire existence on it. 
and <clears> just, <throat> you know, mm. do it to death. Um, I kind of need to find a bit of middle ground there. But yeah. yeah. Are you the same? A hundred percent. And and even what you said before around, uh, you know, when there's, a, when there's a big decision to make, I will talk to everyone. I will even lift up the dirtiest rock and see who's under that to tell me what to do. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it never, it, you just, you always have to come back and you've just got to have, you have to make your own choice. There's just no yeah. other way around it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you, man. Like I, I did, I did, I over research everything yeah. online too and, and just spend so much time knowing exactly the right thing yeah. to do. And, um, and I think the thing that I'm, that I'm trying to, I've been meditating a lot again recently. And I think the thing that, that that helps me with is trying to just just be comfortable in going just listen yeah well you know the answer but but because you don't you may not like the answer doesn't mean it's not the right answer mm. whereas i think quite often when when i'm not listening to my my higher self my inner self whatever you want to call it you it's very easy for me to pick the the answer i like mm as opposed to the answer that is correct yeah, or, or the best answer. The best right? answer, which usually yeah. the best answer takes fucking, it takes you to, to, to lock into your intuition and it, and, yeah. the, and it also it's, it's going to be hard. So if you yeah. know that, if you know that the answer is, is going to take some finagling and, and, uh, yeah. and, and, you know, trusting your gut, it's probably the right way to go. That's it. And it's almost always the answer that takes more work. Yeah. You yeah. know, and as a lazy, as a lazy brother, we <laughs> both are like, nah. Have you ever heard of uh, Enneagrams? <laughs> what is it? They're called Enneagrams. They're person nah. different. Dude, have a look. I'll, actually, I'll send you a link after this. It's uh, Enneagrams and, and uh, I'm a number nine, right? Okay. Which is basically someone that at the core believes that they're not allowed to be capable, which basically means that any time... I go for anything in my life, right? That, that's a vision or something that's a, it's a big idea that I've got. I have this underlying, um, underlying voice that goes, no, nah. no, you don't mate. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Not gonna work. But, but it's, it, it's more around that I'm not capable. I'm not allowed to be capable. So it's like that I need permission for me to go for my dreams. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Have you dived into wh- where that's come from? Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's all childhood yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it all because we all build our ego structures built between basically zero and five. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. That's a. Uh, yeah. Because it's interesting about that. Like, like I, I kind of have a little bit of that too. But then, I think something that really resonated with me. I can't remember. I think it was a podcast I was listening to, but they were. Mm. Have you heard this guy Peter Crone? No, nah, him? No. Nah. He's great, man. I think you'll really dig his stuff. But he was talking with someone about how, they, who had the same thing, this like, this feeling of like, oh, I have these big plans and big ideas, but deep down, I'm like, they're not going to work. Yeah. No, it's not, and and I shouldn't do it because I'll, I'm afraid deep down that I'll let people down because it won't be good enough. You mm. know? But, but what the revelation about it was like, well your intention is is good your intention is to provide something that that is you know positive mm. it's not a negative intention so even if it falls flat people will still get value from it it's just that we you know as kind of perfectionists we go yeah but it's not the way i wanted it to be mm. yeah but no one else knows no yeah. one else no one else knows about that and because your intention is good it people will People resonate with it and they yeah, like it. Totally. And look, I'm sitting here preaching this stuff, but I do the exact same thing. It's so easy in, in theory. You look at it and go, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Mm. But then actually doing it, you go, nah, nah I won't put that out because it'll nah. be shit. Dude, perfect yeah. example. I just uh, I just bought a new iPad, right? Yeah. But um, th- with my iPad, I've been... Like, I reckon this process started six months ago. I don't know why, but six months ago, I went, I need a new iPad. My old one's too old, right? And for six months, I mean, I've been going, I'm getting it. No, I'm not getting it. I'm getting it. Oh, which one should yeah, I get? Yeah. No. And then yeah. the funny thing is it actually came uh, yesterday and I did it and I went, nah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 
six yeah. months of, of just, and I'm like, it wasn't even a money thing. I was like, do I get it? Do, do I, it was, it was just, I yeah. couldn't make a decision on whether I'm going to get this iPad or not. And yeah. literally it came and I was within 10 seconds. I was like, nah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I know the exact thing. I know the exact <sighs> thing. It's a and it's a weird, it's a weird little, little spiral, isn't it? Um, that place. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of yeah. I've been doing this. I've been spending a bunch of money on this studio. You know, yeah. buying like digital plugins and buying speakers and all this kind of stuff. And and you know, a bit of a tight ass in there somewhere. And I yeah. kind of like, nah, 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 don't do that. And then I just pull the trigger and do it. And then I have this fear of like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to actually use it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've actually, I've got no excuse. I've no. made this studio. I've got to make music now. This yeah. is, I can't just sit on, I've been on this TV show. People are expecting music from me. I've got to do it. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I totally know. I totally know how you feel. You're going to master that iPad, Tom. You, oh, get, you get the little <laughs> stylus and everything. I want to see some some real iPad skills. Oh, mate, you wait. <laughs> <laughs> how long? <laughs> You wait a few years and I'll get it. Oh, that's good. Oh, you know what? We'll make a deal. Once you... I'll nail the iPad by the time your album comes out. Okay, great. It's about the same level of uh, service to the world, I reckon. Yeah, perfect. Well, (laughs) well, how about this? I'll do the album and then once the album's out, you have to do like a... almost like a PowerPoint iPad presentation uh, uh, as a review. Yeah, done. I like it. You've done solely on your iPad. Perfect. Done. Okay. All right, dude. Well, dude, what a cool chat. How cool it happened to having you on. Likewise, brother. Thanks yeah. for having me, man. It's been a pleasure to, to catch up. Yeah. And uh yeah, I don't know. It's it's like just watch this space. I'm really excited to see what you're gonna create next, man, because you you it's it almost feels like you you you're just starting to touch the sides. Yeah, I think I think that I'm I'm I think I've kind of been able to figure out myself a bit more yeah um and and kind of understanding where i want to go and i just have to get out of my own way kind of like this is what you're talking about and just do it mm. and just get it out to the world um because i think it's coming from an authentic place but what if Whereas, it's shit yeah well that's it <laughs> because and that you're totally right and that's constantly there mm. but i think the thing is if it's shit nobody cares Whereas I think that what we think is, if it's shit, everyone's gonna go, your shit, your shit, like yeah. that scene from Game of Thrones, you know, <laughs> yeah. where we have to walk naked down the down the street with yeah. everyone shaming us. Yeah. But it's not like that. Yeah. People just are like, mm, and they just move on. Mm. Or or they'll go, I really like this, and you go, oh, do you? Mm. That's a oh. surprise. Look at that. Yeah, I don't, but cool. I'm glad you get some value out of it. You know? Oh, love it. All right, dude. So much love. Thanks, Marky, for coming on. Likewise, brother. Love Ladies you, man. and gentlemen, Talk soon. Mark Furs in the house. You, you, you. Apple shit machine.